Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome. Welcome to the channel. Welcome back to the channel if you're returning. Thank you all so very much for joining me here today. It's the Empress. Today, Sunday, if you're watching this when it posts, it is a timeless reading, but it is going up Sunday. Uh, we are looking at your past life and how you can heal from this past life and kind of healing the soul aspect, confronting your past life to heal the soul. So out in front of you, we have five different decks to choose from, and I felt very called to um, do five decks for some reason this time, which was a little bit overwhelming, and I was a little bit resistant to it, actually. So that may be an energy that some of you guys are coming into this reading with, is having a little bit of resistance to either choosing a pile, or um, there may be some resistance with certain messages that come up, so just be aware of that, and feel free to grab a notebook um, and take any notes or write down anything that may intrigue you or catch your attention um, to kind of work with as you move through this reading and through your path after this reading. But out in front of you we have five, five different decks to choose from and I'm going to ask you guys to take a couple of deep breaths, really ground yourself, come into the present moment, um, and ask yourself which one of these decks is holding the messages you need to hear about uh, the most relevant past life that is currently affecting you and how you can heal the soul from this past life. Uh, and we have deck number one, two, three, four, and five. And I will have the timestamps to the beginning of each reading in the description box below, along with the links to the cards that I'm using for anybody who feels drawn to any of the decks that I use here today. You can also find the details as to how to enter the monthly free tarot reading giveaway. And our next drawing will be on April 16th with the full moon in Libra. Uh, so definitely check that out if that's something that you're interested in. And even if it's after April 16th, you'll just be entered into um, that month's reading whenever you're watching this. So uh, don't forget to do that. I do ask you guys that if you enjoy this reading, if it resonates with you, please do like this video. Subscribe if you're not, as it truly does help to support the channel. Uh, and with all of that being said, go ahead and pause the video if you still need a moment, and I'm going to go ahead and move on to pile number one. Hello, my beautiful group number one. Those of you that chose the Celtic Dragon Tarot with the Moss Agate, this reading is for you. And I'm super excited to get into this. Um, coming into your guys' reading, there is a strong almost like Spanish energy or Mexican, even kind of Mayan energy coming in here. So that's something to maybe take note of for group number one. Um, but let's go ahead here and get into your reading. And we are going to start off here by pulling a couple cards to find out a little bit about who you were as a person in this past life. And then we will get into some more information um, and go deeper into what this past life was and how it affected you and how healing it um, in this life will really help you. So let's go ahead here and pull a couple cards to find out who you were as a person <clears throat> in this past life for group number one. Okay. So our first card out is the King of Roses. Wow. So almost like very high status um, coming in here immediately, like very um, even kind of respected or looked up to. <clears throat> you may have been like some sort of of leader or somebody like I'm seeing this as almost like the the chief of the tribe or like the leader of some sort of group in some sort of way so that's very interesting there is also a, a recognition of male energy coming in here for group number one um, husband or like uh, very there's just there's a very masculine energy um, but I do feel like you guys may have been some sort of like in, in some sort of union that really kind of enforced your power. So um, I, I'm not necessarily seeing this as like king and queen, but like that kind of role. It's like you were in union with somebody and, and the two of you um, 
kind of were higher status or like the leaders or the elders, um, that kind of energy. Interesting. So I do feel for you that there there's heavy male energy coming in here for this past life. I do feel that you were a male in physical kind of form. For group number one, let's go ahead here and pull one more card in regards to who you were in this past life as a person. And we have here, wow, we have judge. Um, so this here says balancing justice and compassion, managing the fair distribution of power. And the shadow attributes here is offering only destructive criticism, misusing business, legal, or criminal authority. So you guys definitely had a sense of authority. That is for sure. That is a very strong energy coming in here um, in regards to like who you were as a person. You guys had some sort of power over other people or over what occurred in other people's lives in some way, shape, or form. Your voice was heard um, very strongly. Your voice had a lot of power. It um, kind of created a lot of actions, I feel, in the community you lived in. The things that you said um, had a lot to do with, like, the the laws or the lifestyle that your community lived by. So that's very, very interesting, group number one. I really... I really like this energy, but there is like this essence of a balancing act that's coming in here with this King of Roses and of course with the judge and the scales. Um, but this King of Roses as well is holding two different roses. Um, this, this King of Roses here is holding a red rose and a white rose. And this is like really speaking to me of the balance between passion and innocence or like passion and purity or like this essence of not allowing your emotions to overrule logic so like the heart and the head kind of energy and balancing act coming in here so I do feel for you guys that in this past life there may have been some significant kind of event or situation that occurred that you really had a hard time um discerning clearly like you it may have been a very emotional situation or event that occurred that caused you to act out of passion or um out of some sort of emotion um or like it, there's just there's some essence here where like you got thrown out of balance in your actions or in your ruling because of some situation that occurred that caused you to put your own personal needs or personal emotions first. Um, interesting. So let's go ahead and get into your tarot group number one. Um, with that, I do feel like that may have something to do with this kind of energy that's coming forth from this past life for you. Let's go ahead and take a look at The, this kind of relevant past life. Take a look at you in this past life for group number one. We have the two of wands. And again, there's this balancing with the two. So the number two may be very significant for some of you guys in some way, shape, or form, but two is all about decisions and it's all about um, like weighing your options. Uh, but I really feel with this two of wands here that, that you guys, it's, I'm seeing this almost as like an orchestrator. Like you guys were very, very strong orchestrators of like how things happened and when things happened. You may have been like a leader of some sort of army sergeant type energy I'm getting um, all of the sudden coming in here as well. So some of you guys may have been like the like war council or something like that where you like really trained other soldiers or something of that sort as well for some of you. But with this two of wands, I'm getting the sense of like this life where you had to put a lot of your own personal desires or interests or wants or emotions to the side and rule more heavily based off of the good of um, the whole of the community or rule based off of what was going to be best for everybody. 
Um, and, and there was, so there was a lot of self-sacrifice, I feel, coming in here. Um, you guys may have sacrificed a lot of what you actually wanted in your life in order to gain more status or in order to rule more fairly in some way, shape, or form. So that energy is coming through here quite strongly. Let's take a look at something that's unresolved from this past life for group number one. We have the Five of Swords. Um, yeah, so there's definitely almost warlike energy. Um, fighting, combat. Um, I Okay, so some of, some of you guys here were in some sort of battle or power struggle in this past life that you may have ended up winning, but it was like very empty it was it, it this win felt very empty because you had to sacrifice everything that you wanted in order to get this like everything that you would have wanted with you when you won this could have been love there is a strong essence of like losing love so whether this was um having to like separate yourself from the person that you were in love with in order to go to war or in order to rule maybe this was um maybe you were in love with somebody who didn't have uh, a high enough status in order to be able to marry them or like that kind of energy coming in here and for some of you I do feel like your spouse or your partner may have lost their life in this battle and that may have been kind of the the point where you I, I'm just really feeling this energy of like almost a breaking point where maybe a loved one was lost and it caused you to like almost like rage or like really go out of balance and really um, become very aggressive with your actions, with your rulings or in like this battle or this war that you were in. Um, and and it's like that emotional kind of rage that came through with this caused you to win but when you won you didn't have anything there that you wanted to take with you um or that you were fighting for even you uh interesting so i really feel like you guys lost a loved one i really do that energy is coming through here quite strongly um and it is coming through very strongly as like a spouse or a partner um, and, and I feel like this may be affecting you in your current life now by causing you to like, feel like you can't connect romantically, especially, but even, um, that it's not going to be romantic for all of you, but that is the energy coming in here. The strongest is that you may have a hard time connecting to people romantically in this lifetime. Um, because your soul, it, it was almost like because of this abrupt loss, your soul may be kind of stuck on this past love and not kind of allowing you to connect to new love. Um, so that's very interesting. Let's go ahead and take a look at how this um, may be affecting you in your current life uh, for group number one. We have the Ten of Pentacles. Yeah, so I really feel like this is causing you to have a fear of building a home, building a legacy, or like building a family. Um, there's something here where it's almost like you're scared of your own success out of fear of losing all of it suddenly. There's a fear of sudden loss here for group number one that is dramatically affecting your life and your lifestyle, and it's affecting your ability to build a legacy or like it's it's really interfering with your ability to kind of follow your purpose or your destiny even for some of you guys um some of you guys may really have a hard time committing to other people or staying loyal or you may find yourself in relationships where um the the other person can't be trustworthy or loyal in some way shape or form and i really feel like this is because of this past life kind of energy that your soul is still stuck in um interesting so let's take a look at um why you need to complete this unresolved kind of energy at this time group number one we have the king of swords 
Um, this is so that you can come into that balance again, so that you can come into that fairness and into that logical mind. Um, there's definitely something here, group number one, where you guys um, are going to be able to, you, you really need to be able to make some sort of like impartial judgment. So there's going to be a need to be able to detach from your emotions or from your fears even for some of you guys and make um, like a fair, wise, just decision in some way, shape, or form. Um, and this could very well have to do with like the direction that you go in life. Um, so there's definitely like this emphasis on being able to detach from this overwhelmingly like strong emotional attachment to the fear or the fear of loss. Um, and there's an emphasis on like justice, on fairness here group number one so there I, f I feel like there may be um some some kind of energy or opportunity coming into your life very soon where you are going to have to choose to take a new path or you're going to have to like make a balanced decision and there's something here about really needing to be able to detach from the overwhelming emotional kind of response that you may have to this decision um interesting so let's go ahead and see how you can maybe come into this balance in this lifetime we have the seven of pentacles so there's a need to slow down here um, which I do feel for you guys that maybe you move through life very rapidly or maybe you kind of run through everything without taking a moment to pause or to collect your your thoughts or your emotions um, there's something here where maybe if you guys I, I just really feel this energy of you guys like just charge through your life you just plow through everything without connecting without evaluating um and this this could be for different reasons for everybody here but for some of you guys the reason why this happens is out of this fear of um getting stuck somewhere or out of this fear of somebody seeing you for who you really are or there's just uh there's just this almost like fear-driven instinct in you guys where you just feel the need to continue pushing through and plowing through everything as quickly as you possibly can because if you stop, you feel like you might not be able to move again in some way, shape, or form. Um, and with the Seven of Pentacles, this is really saying in order to overcome this overwhelming emotional response to having to live your life <laughs> to having to make decisions to having to choose maybe yourself over other people whatever this is for you like there's truly a need to slow down and and really work on patience here um in order for you to really come into this balance of the heart and head is really what i'm feeling here like really coming into this balance really coming into this ability to not allow solely like just your emotions to make your decisions or to make you take action as well as not allowing just your thoughts or your ideas or your opinions to solely make you take action so there's definitely something here about like sitting in this energy for group number one and allowing yourself to understand the emotional responses that you have that cause you to feel like you have to just push through everything or even the kind of thought patterns that you have that may cause this because for some of you this may be kind of more on the other side of the the mental scale like really overthinking everything or maybe if you stop you begin overthinking everything um so whichever way that goes for you like there's truly a need to like stop and not allow yourself to take action on the first kind of reaction that you have to situations um, especially if it causes anger or um, things like that so some of you guys may really like lash out very easily you may lash out very quickly you may lash out when there really seems to be no apparent reason for it so there's like this quick response that you guys have that is like a defense mechanism that you're really being asked to sit with and evaluate in order to heal this in order to allow yourself to begin building um, a home or a, a steady kind of foundation especially in regards to love and 
career um, or even this could even be aligning you to your purpose for some of you guys but there's a strong emphasis on building a home um, so for a lot of you guys here this may be about like building a more secure home a, a safer home or like a, just more stability in your home life um, by like healing this aggressive reaction response that you guys have um, let's take a look at the important lesson here for group number one we have the four of pentacles Yeah, so there's definitely something here with stability and with um, some of you guys, if this is in regards to like gaining stability financially, there's a true need to evaluate what it is that causes you to react with spending all your money or causing you to react in this way that causes you to come like into lack or into poverty. For some of you guys, there is a need to evaluate a sense of selfishness. Um, some of you guys, I am feeling like you hold a lot of guilt or a lot of shame if you invest anything into yourself. So you just like kind of, there's a lot of distractive energy here. Like you run through life um, allowing everything to distract you and allowing yourself to give your energy to anything and everything to avoid having to invest into yourself or to sit with yourself. Um, and, and really a big lesson here for group number one is learning how to gain stability within the self. There, so there's a huge need to like turn inward here for group number one and allow yourself to sit in your energy, to evaluate your energy and to invest into your own life, your own purpose and maybe pull back from all of these distractions or pull back from giving all of your energy away so rapidly out of this like need to avoid the self. There's a huge need to avoid the self here for group number one. Um, let's take a look at an energy or a characteristic or personality trait even that um, would be beneficial for you to kind of channel into this life for group number one. And then we will get into some oracle messages for you as well. Oh, so we have the Page of Cups. Um, so I feel like a lot of you guys may have really been like very, especially with this King of Roses, like very gentle, very romantic, very healing energy. And there's like this huge need to find that within yourself again, um, which for some of you guys, that may be what you're avoiding is like your emotional kind of healing process. Um, so there's a, a true need for you guys to maybe tap into this ability to give and receive love or healing um, and really allow that to come into this lifetime. You guys may really avoid a lot of love or relationship energies in this lifetime. Um, you may solely focus on career or like really distract yourself from your own emotional body in some way, shape or form. And there's a true need to like really tap into that part of yourself in order for it to begin healing. Um, so let's go ahead and get into some oracle messages for group number one. We are going to uh, go a little deeper into this past life and any kind of messages that you need to hear in regards to this healing process, healing the soul. But first of all, let's let's take a look deeper into this past life. Um, oh yeah, look at this. Phobias. There's so much fear that came forth from this past life with you guys. So much fear. Um, and these fears started in this past life. So you guys may really fear death or you may really have a hard time with anything that like really overthinking about how any potential danger could affect you or how you're putting yourself in any potential danger. There's a lot of fear here. Group number one, a lot of fear here. Um, And then we have Atlantis. So you guys may really resonate with the Atlantis energy. Um, you may really resonate with the kind of um, energy of Atlantis or like the, you guys may really be meant to tap into that higher vibrational energy that Atlantis kind of embodied. Um, 
And with all of the water, I really feel like there is a huge message here about tapping into like your own water energy or like using water energy to tap into your emotional body. Um, some of you guys working with the moon may be very beneficial and like the cycles of your emotions and, and things like that may be very helpful for you as well. Uh, let's pull one more of these for group number one. We have persecution and inquisition, um, which goes very beautifully with this kind of judge energy here. I do feel for you guys, that, okay, so really what's coming through here, oh look, in the bottom of the deck we have authority figures. Um, so yeah, you guys were definitely some sort of authority figure, and I really feel for you guys that some sort of like tragedy or trauma or situation occurred that caused you to lash out against potentially a whole country or... Um, I'm kind of seeing this as like the, the fall of Atlantis, the fall of your civilization, the fall of your community because some traumatic event happened potentially with your spouse or your partner or somebody that you cared very deeply for and it caused you to just throw everything you had at revenge instead of justice. Um, and, and that's really coming through here for you guys. So that's very interesting, but very powerful. It's, it's created a lot of fear around losing people that you care about or love or connecting to other people um, out of fear of losing that connection in some way, shape, or form. So that's very, very interesting. Our next card here, we have, <laughs> we have a time to walk alone. Yeah, there's a true need for you guys to really turn inward here for group number one. That's a very strong message coming through for you guys, turning inward, sitting with yourself, with your emotions, with your phobias, and really getting to know what it is that's driving the actions that you're taking. Um, we also have growth coming through here. Yeah, so you guys are at a point in time in your journey where you are being asked to grow um, emotionally, mentally, spiritually. You may even be going through some sort of awakening at this time for group number one. Um, so there's a need to allow yourself to expand and to grow like internally and in yourself in order to align to this like higher vibration or this greater kind of purpose that I feel coming in here for you guys. Like, um, yeah, I, I really feel this sense of really growing, expanding, expanding your home, expanding your finances, expanding your energy and aligning to um, somebody or something that is truly going to mean a lot to you. Um, but you can't come into alignment with this even though it's meant for you until you can heal your emotional body in particular and the fear of your own emotions. So Let's go ahead here and pull a couple more cards, go a little deeper, group number one. We have the Giza Plateau with Sacred Journey. Yeah, this is definitely very uh, a very sacred journey for you right now. This is really about finding yourself. Group number one, there's a true need to like find yourself again instead of avoiding yourself. There's a strong sense of self-avoidance here that is truly affecting you um, and your growth. And we have Anubis with guide and protector. Beautiful. Yes, you guys are being very guided, but you are very protected. So um, when you find yourself getting overwhelmed with like this fear, or this anxiety, or this um, need to like detach from self just try to come into this energy of knowing that you are protected At the bottom of the deck here we have spiritual transformation there's definitely transformation happening within you some of you guys working with anubis or some sort of protective energy um, or protections may be very beneficial for you while you're kind of working through the fear of self um interesting so let's pull you one final message group number one one final message um, any last guidance or advice that spirit has for you in regards to kind of mending the soul from this past life? So here we have dance with the rattle and uh, boulder opal. So group number one, there's a need for like 
movement of your self movement of your physical body um and movement of like your energetic body there's something here about like really it's almost like your energetic body being very stuck or stagnant so tuning into anything that may help you kind of um release that or come into like the sense of freedom may be very very beneficial for you guys um like dance meditations and things like that um that have to do with the physical body so that you can bring that energy to the present moment and into your f current physical body I feel is uh going to be very very powerful for you but this is what I'm seeing for my beautiful group number one if you enjoyed this reading if it brought you value please hit that like button comment down below let me know uh if you chose this pile let me know how it resonated and any other topics that you may want to see a reading on don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already i thank you guys so very much for watching and i will see you guys next time bye hello my beautiful group number two those of you that chose the vintage tarot and the fire courts this reading is for you and we are looking at um your your past lives and how to potentially kind of mend or heal the soul from past life issues uh coming into your reading there is a couple things coming into your reading here um first of all there is like a heavy sense of creation um in like a mother sense so like creation of life or creation of like life force energy in some way shape or form um but very feminine very like mother like very much so in a sense where like maybe you taught somebody how to live um like you you taught them how to walk how to cook how to like survive in a very nourishing kind of way um there's also the sense of an eating disorder coming through here for some of you guys so this may be an energy you experienced in this past life or maybe even something that you struggle with currently um, but the energy is here, so I do feel the need to kind of touch on it. I do want to say, um, you know, these readings are never meant to replace any medical or professional advice or opinions. Um, so definitely, you know, use these as a form of validation or confirmation, but never to replace any sort of assistance um, or anything like that. But let's go ahead and get into your reading group number two. And starting off, we are going to take a look at who you were as a person before we get into what this past life was. So I'm going to pull a couple of cards here, group number two, and find out a little bit about who you were as a person in this past life that's coming for us, group number two. So our first card here, we have uh, the Queen of Keys. Yeah, definitely feminine energy, definitely like nurturing kind of energy, mothering kind of energy. This energy of somebody who kind of almost like homemaker kind of energy group number two definitely definitely homemaker kind of energy um let's pull another card here before we get into your tarot and we have wow we have companion light attributes loyalty uh tenacity and unselfishness shadow attributes betrayal by misusing confidences loss of personal identity so there is this strong sense of like guiding somebody through life in some way shape or form i do feel like this is this past life is very strongly related to somebody that you nurtured in some way shape or form whether this was a a like partner um or a child there is strong child energy coming through here so some of you guys you are coming through as this mother or this homemaker this nurturer um, some of you guys are coming through as the child so that's kind of interesting definitely use your own discernment in regards to where you feel you best kind of fit in this reading um, but there's the sense for some of you guys of like betraying that bond in some way shape or form um, so let's go ahead here and get into your tarot group number two and go a little deeper into this starting off we are going to be looking at um this past life what this past life was a, a card to represent group number two's past life that's coming forward we have the six of pentacles
Yeah, I really feel like you guys were in some sort of position to help nurture and nourish others. Um, some of you guys were a mother as well, but I feel like you were in like this higher status or you had more financial backing or you like you had enough abundance and prosperity and resources to spread that outside of your home. Um, and I feel like that's really who you were is you were, you were very much so like the nurturer. You were the one who gave to the needy. I see you as being like the soul that, you know, set up the, it's almost like set up a kitchen outside and served food to those who didn't have it. And like that kind of energy. Interesting. Um, very beautiful energy coming forth here. Very beautiful energy coming forth here. I feel like you guys were very, very nurturing, almost like cancer type energy coming through here. Um, very mother-like, very nurturing, very nourishing. There is an emphasis on like food here. And I don't know if this is like like what you taught other people to do or if maybe cooking was your career or if there's again when I came into this reading there was a sense of like an eating disorder um there is an emphasis on like nourishment here of the body um let's go ahead here and see something unresolved from this past life for group number two we have the knight of swords I've, I'm really feeling this sense of somebody coming to you while you were like traveling abroad or like working abroad or even like working overseas or like um, in some sort of other country working to like help the needy in some way, shape or form, like somebody coming to you and relaying this message of loss in some way, shape or form. Um, maybe you lost a child while you were away nurturing other people. That's kind of how this is coming through here. Like, um, maybe a child passed away from illness or, um, for in some way a child passed away. And I feel like you were away, like, nurturing or, like, giving that mothering energy to other people that you felt needed it. And, like, in this instant there was this sense of like guilt for giving the energy that you should have been giving to your child to other people like that was the mentality surrounding this wow not that you were doing anything wrong I don't feel like you were you know neglecting your children or anything like that I feel like they were very well cared for but I do feel like there was this sense of guilt or this sense of shame um this Almost like you felt like you were selfish for wanting to help others instead of putting all of your energy into your own children or your own family. Um, so you guys may have a tendency to give far too much and to neglect the self. Um, this could come through in eating disorders or maybe you just are always too busy doing other things or helping other people to pay attention to your own health or your own nourishment. Um, so there is like an emphasis here that in this current lifetime, there is a need for more like self care and self awareness, self nurturing and like being more mindful of your health and of your physical body and what you are putting into it or what you are neglecting to put into it. Um, see how this past life is currently affecting you group number two wow we have the five of cups yeah um I feel like you guys get very stuck in the sense of grief there may even be times in your life where you are depressed or kind of grieving almost um when maybe you don't even know why um or maybe some of you guys may have developed this sense of uh, premonitions coming through here, like being able to almost like divine when, when, um, either when people are going to pass on or when you're going to lose something in some way, shape or form, or some of you guys may even kind of manifest loss by only focusing on, um, how things could turn out negatively. Um, 
and this could be like not manifesting like the loss of a human life but manifesting like the loss of emotional connection or of finances um things like that like always expecting the worst the worst to happen always expecting people to betray you or people to um there's just this sense of feeling unworthy feeling like everybody is more worthy than you are and constantly trying to prove that to other people that it, that kind of energy coming through here for you guys group number two wow so you guys may have really struggled with like wounded feminine energy throughout this life as well um like really struggled with it and maybe you're coming to a point in your life where it's time to begin healing that um you guys may have even suffered like loss of children or even like the loss of a mother, however that resonates for you in this lifetime um, as well. And it's almost like this grief is like a, a comforting energy just because of its sense of familiar, familiarity. Like there is a sense of like familiarness to this grief that you guys fall into. It's almost like you use this grief as a blanket. And I'm not saying that it isn't real because it most definitely is. And I don't want to downplay that at all. But there is like this sense of familiarness to the depression or the sadness or the grief. Um, that's almost like comforting for you guys. Maybe it's because it makes you feel closer to this loved one in some way, shape or form. Um, or maybe it's because you feel like it can't get any worse. So it's like comforting that, you know, you, you can survive that energy. Um, interesting. Um, but yeah, a strong sense of like neglecting the self coming in here in your present life due to this past life group number two. Let's go ahead here and see why you need to uh, kind of complete this unresolved energy from this past life. We have justice. Um, yeah, there there is a longing for balancing here. Like your soul is longing for uh, almost like a soul retrieval here for group number two. I, and it, there is a sense of karmic balance coming in here. Like that was the first initial thing that came to my mind. But I don't feel like it's it's karmic for a lot of you guys. I, I feel for the majority of you that chose this pile, this is about like retrieving your soul from a point in time of this past life when this message was received um, and, and pulling it back to, to now. You guys may even have like this premonition energy that was coming in. It may even be like memories from this past life, memories of this sadness, memories of this depression, memories of this loss of this past life. It may not be like premonitions of the future. It may be memories of a past life that come in for you. That's very interesting. Um, but with justice coming through here, this is also like Libra energy. And this is really, uh, and the Six of Pentacles is also Libra energy. Um, but there, there's really like this sense of trust, uh, uh, inability to trust coming in here. So that may be something that you guys have struggled with as well. Um, but with the, like, there's like overcompensation, like the light attributes here for this companion is unselfishness and Libra is all about like how we relate to other people and our relationships and our connections and things like that. And I, I feel a strong sense of like really giving more of yourself than you should be really like neglecting yourself and being so unselfish that you are literally like harming yourself and your physical body in order to it's almost like you're trying to make up for the past life energy here like you're trying to like your soul is trying to make up for that interesting Take a look at how you can resolve this past life energy. We have the Queen of Pentacles, self-worth, um, strong Venus energy coming in here, strong feminine energy coming in here, and a strong sense of self-worth being needed here. Like really, group number two really, like 
there is a need for like revitalization here, like revamping your life or like finding that life force energy. I feel like some of you guys, some of you guys may have like lost your will to live, um, either in this past life or even in this present one, um, at some point in time on your journey. But there's like a need for life force energy to come in here, a need for fire, a need for energy, a need for motivation, um, And I feel like you guys will find that in in trying to discover your self-worth, um, really trying to heal your sense of worthlessness here um, by getting to the root of that. Like, why do you feel that way, group number two? This may be something that is very beneficial for you to, like, journal about or even for some of you guys finding some sort of therapist or counselor or somebody that you can talk to. Um, which may be difficult for some of you guys, especially if you resonate with like this trust issue kind of energy or um, some of you guys, this may be so exaggerated to the, and, and not in like a bad way, but this, it may be so kind of inflamed to the point where you almost don't feel worthy of help even. So there, there is resources out there, group number two, to help this. There is truly a need for you to find it somewhere in yourself and know that you are worthy of healing um, and and maybe find comfort in the fact that this this feeling of lifelessness most likely isn't even stemming from this current life that you're living. Um, there's a need to find beauty in yourself um, to really, you know, buy yourself a new outfit, buy yourself new, new makeup or go get your hair cut or get your hair dyed. Or, um, some of you guys really focusing on like the self image is really going to help you start tuning into this, um, and becoming more aware of your body and your body's needs and your, your worth and how you are worthy of the time to take care of yourself. Um, Especially if you guys struggle with depression, that's one of the most common kind of side effects, if you will, of depression is like the lack of self-care, the lack of motivation, like stop, maybe you've stopped taking showers, stopped eating, stopped brushing your hair, whatever it is for you, like really tuning into that self-love is going to be so, so healing and helpful for group number two. Take a look at the kind of important lesson of this past life that you are being asked to understand now, group number two. We have the emperor. You guys are being asked to fight, to, to, to find that willpower. Um, so group number two in this present life, a lesson that's coming in is a lesson in finding that inner warrior, that, that, that fighter kind of energy within you, that, that warrior energy, that fire, that life force, that vitality, really finding that within you is a big part of like the soul lesson in this lifetime for group number two, like that will to live. Um, wow. Let's take a look at an energy uh, characteristic or personality trait that you would benefit from channeling into this lifetime for group number two. So uh, a trait from this past life that would benefit you pulling into this one. We have the three of wands. So exploration, this this trait of, yeah, see, and there was this sense of like traveling to other countries or other places to help people in need, um, in this past life and, and pulling that sense of exploration and going outside of your comfort zone or going outside of this known territory or going outside of the same routine or, um, whatever it is for you, like going outside of the box, going outside of your comfort zone is going to be a super helpful trait for you to pull into this lifetime group number two. So maybe traveling or, um, you know, exploring new places, exploring new things, like having new experiences is going to be super, super beneficial for you, group number two. 
let's go ahead and pull you guys some oracle messages and and get some more uh, messages for you in regards to this past life and how you can kind of heal your soul um, from this past life from confronting this past life group number two so we have authority figures um yeah so there is again an emphasis on being in charge of somebody's life in some way shape or form as well as an emphasis on finding that leadership that willpower that kind of warrior energy that authoritative energy within yourself that leadership energy within yourself taking charge um atlantis So group number, two, I'm really, I'm sorry, I just got really distracted. I'm really feeling like this sense of, um, like sacred waters being super important in some way, shape or form from like this past, it could be from this past life or it could be something that you're meant to tap into now. You may really resonate with the energy of Atlantis or resonate with like the legends or the myths of Atlantis or um, I do feel for you guys, group number two, that it may even be beneficial for you to study or learn about those energies because it may bring forth like some sort of realizations for you um, and, and things like that or maybe traveling to... Um, new lands again interesting we also have trees coming forth here so there is for me trees very much so represent history they represent um bringing forth like the past into the present moment trees live for so long and they hold so much energy and everything that has happened on this earth around them through their lifespan i feel like they hold all of that energy and like there's this huge sense for group number two um of, of history like learning your history or like studying any kind of historical events that maybe you feel drawn to um some of you guys too like ancestral work or studying your ancestry may really help you find some sort of enlightenment as well so that's very interesting let's get you a couple more cards here group number two okay we have <laughs> Okay, yeah. So we have be still a while. So really allowing yourself to stop um, and, and evaluate how you're feeling and, and what you need and um, what your body needs and, and things like that's going to be super helpful. And we have memories of the forgotten self. And like I said already, like you guys may have like these memories of a past life that's definitely a very strong energy or memories of being somewhere, even dreams of being in a different lifetime or in a different um, country or things like that. And I feel like it's really bringing forth this energy here to be healed. It's almost like your soul is calling out for a soul retrieval. That's really what I feel for group number two. Let's get a couple more cards. Group number two. We have Bast with joy and pleasure. So there's a strong emphasis here on finding happiness, on coming out of the sadness, coming out of the grief, coming out of the depression. A strong, strong emphasis on um, finding joy, finding pleasure, experiencing new emotions, allowing yourself to feel something other than unworthiness. Um, we also have here the fire spirit. Yes, there, yes. Um, some of you guys working with the element of fire may be super beneficial for you tapping into like life force energy, um, this, you know, in whatever way that you feel called to do, whatever way it could be yoga, it could be like, um, breath work, it could be, um, whatever makes you feel that fire, it could be any sort of creative, um, energies or creative projects that maybe you've had interest in, like whatever it is for you. Uh, it could be sexual energy, whatever it is for you, a true need to tap into that fire, that energy, that life force energy group number two. That's such a strong message here. Let's go ahead and pull you one final, wow, one final card group number 
to one final message in regards to this past life and kind of healing or mending your soul from this past life. And here we have, oh, we have truth and integrity with summer and turquoise for a stone. So group number two, there is a strong emphasis here on like finding your truth as well as like this sense of healing the trust for yourself, like trusting in yourself, trusting in your decisions, trusting in your emotions, trusting in your worthiness to be alive. Super, super important for group number two. But this is what I'm seeing for you guys. If you enjoyed this reading, if it brought you value, if it resonated, please hit that like button as it truly does help to support the channel. Comment down below. Let me know if you chose this pile. Let me know if you have any questions or any other topics that you may like to see a video on. Don't don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hello, my beautiful group number three. Those of you that chose the Druid Craft Tarot with the green hair jasper, this reading is for you. And we are looking at your past life and how to confront this past life in order to bring healing and mending to your soul. So starting off here, group number three, uh, a kind of flash of a message that I was getting coming into your reading was the sense of almost flightiness, but in a sense of like moving from one thing to another very rapidly. And this did come to me through like relationships, like moving from relationship to relationship to relationship or having multiple kind of um, relationships at one time even for some of you. But there's a sense of like this inability to commit, I guess, is really what this is showing me. This inability to commit or to anchor into something. So that's very interesting. Group number three, let's go ahead and get into some cards for you. We are going to start off by pulling a couple of cards to find out a little bit about who you were in this past life before we get into your tarot and dive into uh, what this past life was and what needs healed from it. So group number three... Who were you in this past life that's coming forth for, okay, wow, yeah, see we have paths unknown. So it's almost um, coming through as like being very indecisive, like you may have been a very indecisive soul in this past life, like very unable to choose a path or commit to a path out of fear of missing out on something else or fear of choosing the wrong thing, like very much so this energy of not being able to decide. Um, let's pull another card here for group number three. Who was group number three in this past life? We have guide. Light attribute represents the nature of the divine in life and in yourself. Shadow attribute places financial gain and control over imparting spiritual insight. So, Group number three, there is this essence of uh, maybe using people to get ahead in some way, shape, or form, or maybe the people that you chose to connect to or be in relationships with were people of status or of stature in some way, shape, or form so that they could better benefit you out of this inability to decide how to move forward in your own life. It was. It's almost like this energy of attaching to certain people or needing other people to bring certain energies into your life out of this inability to do it for yourself. I'm I'm not Yeah, so I'm I'm really seeing this as like needing other people to take care of you or to, to provide a home or stability in some way shape or form. Some of you may have even like sold yourself or your body in this past life in order to get ahead in some way, shape, or form. Um, not all of you, but that energy is definitely here. But there's just this this energy of like latching on to certain people that you're perceiving would would make your life better or would bring in some sort of gain for you that you didn't actually have to obtain yourself. Wow. Okay. Um so let's go ahead and get into your tarot here, group number three, and go a little deeper into this past life 
Um, we are going to start off with a card to represent this relevant past life for you. Group number three, let's take a look at what this past life was for you, group number three. We have the Four of Cups. Yeah, so there was this sense of stagnancy, this sense of like this inability to move forward, this inability to make a decision, but also the sense of boredom. So I do feel for some of you guys that some of the things that you did were just strictly out of the sense of trying to escape this boredom or this dissatisfaction. There is this huge sense of dissatisfaction coming in here or like uncontent energy coming in here that you guys were constantly trying to escape almost in this past life. So that's very interesting. So I do feel that your life may have been very stagnant. Like maybe you didn't accomplish a whole lot in your lifetime. Maybe you didn't get very far or get as far as you thought you were going to. Um, I also feel for um, you guys in this past life that there was a lack of direction for you in the sense of like gu guidance, like a, a lack of parental figures or guardians. Um, there, there wasn't really anybody for you to look up to or anybody to teach you how to move through life, which I feel is part of the reason why you ended up living your life in such a sporadic kind of way. Um, interesting. So let's go ahead here. Yeah, there's just a strong sense of being dissatisfied with the life that you were living, um, being uncontent, always trying to find a way to get out of this boredom or out of even poverty for some of you guys. Um, and this lack of parental guidance or this lack of guardian figures, or this lack of um, figures in your life that would teach you how to live or how to move forward or how to live in like the real world if you will um i i really feel a strong sense of like lack in that area of your life um let's take a look at something that is unresolved from this past life for group number three wow we have the moon So there was a lack of a mother figure, I feel, um, and a lack of a, an ability to like transform with your circumstances. It's almost like you allowed your environment or your circumstances to control or dictate the life that you lived. You allowed your circumstances to keep you in lack or to keep you in poverty out of this. It, it, it was subconscious, like subconsciously feeling like you didn't have a choice um, because you were never taught otherwise. So this energy that's coming through here from this past life that is unresolved is very subconscious. Like there are subconscious ways of thinking or patterns that are coming through here that are relevant to this life and need healing in order to transform your life now. Um, this, I feel for group number three really involves the shadow. I really strongly feel that, that this really involves your ability to see your own shadow. Some of you guys may have um, lived in this past life very like egotistically or very ego driven, um, very driven by financial gain, very driven by um, control or selfishness almost. Um, but I feel for you that in this past life that the selfishness was more of like a self-preservation or like that's what you believed it to be. Um, so there's a need to like look at this idea of self-preservation that you have in this present life now. Because there is like an aspect of this coming forth into this life to be healed. Um, and the self-preservation almost is what keeps you stagnant or stuck out of this inability to change because there's fear of this change causing pain or lack or loss in some way, shape, or form. Um, interesting. So let's take a look at how this is currently affecting you, group number three. We have the Princess of Pentacles. Yeah, there's an inability to grow here. There's almost like an immaturity in regards to 
your physical resources are in regards to you being able to obtain and sustain financial health or even a home for some of you guys, like an inability to sustain security in some way, shape, or form, or like an immaturity when it comes to the way you perceive finances or physical resources or even your physical body. Um, so you guys may really struggle with holding a job or with um, keeping a home or keeping like a sense of stability or a sense of like anchoredness like really you may also really have a hard time staying grounded or present in in your physical current life you may really have a hard time staying like in your physical body So anybody here that's been trying to like manifest money or stability or security or even safety for some of you guys, um, like very root chakra kind of energy, like really trying to manifest like possessions or material gain in some way, shape or form. Those of you that resonate with that, if your manifestations have been blocked or very sporadic or maybe they come in but you can't hold on to them. Um, I feel like you were kind of led to this reading as a way to kind of inform you, like from your guides here, to inform you that there is like subconscious and soul healing needed in order for you to be able to match the vibration of what you're trying to bring in. So that's very interesting. So I feel like if you've been wondering why your manifestations haven't been working or haven't been sticking or, or um, anything like that, um, you are definitely in this reading for a reason. And like this, this reason here, this subconscious energy that needs to be healed is the reason why your manifestations aren't working. Um, wow. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, why you need to maybe complete this this unresolved energy from this past life we have the ace of swords so you can see truth so you can see your truth in this life instead of the truth of who you used to be in this past life i really feel like you guys are it's almost like you're living in this physical life here but your your mind your subconscious mind is still in this past life it's like you are your soul is still stuck in this past life energy but like living through you now. It's almost like your past life self is living vicariously through you in this present life. That's very interesting. Um, very kind of abstract energy coming in here with that, in that regard. But really, this is a, a chance for a new beginning, a chance to begin gaining clarity as to how to proceed, how to move forward, how to grow, how to make a decision especially with the swords this is all about like decisiveness and truth and wisdom and like knowledge and the higher self and this is like uh, a chance to begin ascending group number three interesting so you guys are really being asked to raise your vibration and to begin like gaining the knowledge that you need to raise your vibration um, so I do feel like group number three, your guides are working with you very closely at this point in time on your journey, regardless of whenever you came to this reading. Um, your guides are working very closely with you and your higher self is working very closely with your shadow, like your shadow is asking to be healed, asking to be seen, asking for light to be shown on certain parts of yourself. Um, especially like certain parts of your subconscious self, um, the parts of yourself that you aren't aware of are the parts of yourself that you need to be seeking currently. It's very interesting. So group number three, there's like the sense of something that you don't know yet that is going to be revealed to you um, by like diving into your subconscious or doing any kind of dream work or even like meditations may be super beneficial for you at this time. Um, Let's see here how you can kind of come into completion of this past life issue for group number three. Wow, we have rebirth. Look at this, you guys. Um, so there's like a part of your soul that still needs to accept the 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 pain or like surrender to the way that past life played out because I feel like this essence of your soul being 
discontent with the way this past life was lived. Um, maybe you didn't accomplish the things that your soul set out to accomplish in that past life. And it's like your soul is really caught up in that lifetime because something didn't happen the way it was supposed to or because you never really got anywhere. Um, and there's really a need to like surrender, like acceptance, like this need for acceptance in order and this need to accept that you are in a new life now so this need to accept your current present position is super important again that root chakra coming in very strongly for group number three grounding yourself in the present moment anchoring yourself into this life is going to be so beneficial for you and your growth and your ability to maintain sustenance and security like truly this need to bring your soul into this present lifetime um, and bring your subconscious into this present lifetime. Um, some of you guys may be doing some work with the ego as well or maybe like third, uh, like the third chakra, the solar plexus chakra um, with like confidence and self-esteem and um, working through like maybe some selfishness issues or the, uh, the maybe control issues. Some of you guys may have really suffered like from narcissism in your past life or you may have experienced a lot of that in this present life whether it was from yourself or from people around you but there is a sense of bringing like some narcissistic energy with you from this past life out of this inability to see like because you had no guidance in this past life you could only see yourself and how things affected you and what you had to do to get by um, there is like a sense of bringing that kind of energy with you into this life and there's like a need for acceptance of where you currently are, a need for acceptance of the truth and surrendering to the present moment in order to be able to move forward in a new way. Um, I hope that makes sense for you guys. Let's take a look at an important lesson coming forth for you in regards to this for group number Three. There's two cards that want to come out, so I'm going to take them both. Um, wow, yeah, we have the tower, and that's really what I was feeling, like this need for change, this need for acceptance of where you are and allowing, like, allowing the pieces to fall wherever they may instead of trying to control or um, restrain anything. Interesting. And we also have the Eight of Cups, yeah, walking away from the way that you thought things were supposed to be, like accepting that things aren't what you want them to be. Like, I feel like you guys may have a tendency of living in this life where you want things to be a specific way or maybe you try to control situations in order for them to turn out in a specific way and there is like a, a huge resistance to allowing anything to happen outside of that and there that's really um, kind of the lesson you're being asked to learn is allowing things to happen in the way they need to happen to get you to your manifestation or to this fin final outcome instead of restricting yourself from the final outcome out of a resistance to take the path that you need to take to get there. Um, I hope that makes sense for you guys. But yeah, so you guys are really being asked to learn how to change, to learn how to accept change, to learn how to walk away from this perception of perfection, to learn how to walk away from this perception that you may have lived in for multiple lifetimes on what parents are supposed to be, on what life is supposed to be, on what um, you're supposed to have or how you're supposed to feel. Like, I feel like you guys have this very strong sense of what life is supposed to be like and because your life doesn't match that it's almost like you've lived in this sense of disassociation from self and you're really being asked to accept where you currently are and start moving forward and deeper into your path instead of resisting your path because it isn't what you perceive it should be um let's take a look here at um, an energy or a character characteristic or personality trait that would be beneficial um, for you to channel from this past life into your present life for group number three. And we have the Ten of Cups. So I do feel again like in this past life that you guys had this desire for happiness or that maybe you found happiness in in relationships um, or maybe like other like social environments I feel like 
social energies can be very helpful for you in regards to finding your happiness and connecting you to love. Um, and maybe you resist being in public or in society in some way, shape or form. And it'd be very beneficial for you guys to allow yourself to connect to family and to friends as you go through this process instead of resisting it and trying to do it alone. Um, so let's go ahead and pull you guys some oracle messages and go a little deeper into this for you. Group number three. A little deeper into this past life. We have uh, persecution and inquisition. I feel like you guys had a strong tendency to blame things on other people, which kind of goes along with that narcissistic energy that's coming in from this past life. Um, and I really feel like a lot of that stems from like this lack of parental figures or guardian figures in your life, group number three. And that may be something that you're experiencing again in this life. Maybe you aren't very close to family or friends in this life when in this past life, maybe that's all you actually desired. Um, because you didn't have that growing up um, or you didn't have that in your life and now you have that and you resist it. Um, so interesting. We have vows. So again, when I first came into this reading, I brought up like there's like this sense of this inability to commit to your path or this inability to like anchor something in or like follow through on a promise um, or, or stay committed in a relationship. Um, that may, I, I really feel like that may really be kind of transferring into this lifetime, this inability to stay loyal or to be trustworthy in some way, shape or form. So I do feel like that has something to do with the shadow work that's coming in, um, really becoming very aware of the intentions behind the things that you say and do. Um, is it for control? Is it for financial or personal gain in some way, shape or form instead of out of the, a desire to commit or to be honest? Um, so I do feel like you guys are being asked to like find honor in this lifetime. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, so we have monk or nun coming through here and so there is an emphasis on like your belief system in this past life as well. Maybe you really, um, had a hard time connecting to any guidance or like spiritual enlightenment due to the the circumstances of your life and the way things played out um there's a strong sense of like marriage coming through here in your present life though and maybe you were married and got divorced because you couldn't stay in a relationship anymore or maybe this is an energy that's coming into your life now um i i, I almost feel like for some of you guys, and this could go either way, so apply it how it resonates, but I feel like for some of you guys, you may have, like I brought up, like sold your body in this past life um, for financial gain or control or power in some way, shape, or form. Um, but, but like you, you lived a life where maybe you were supposed to be like not active sexually or something like that or maybe in this lifetime you've kind of rejected romantic interactions altogether because of this past life um interesting so there's like the sense of chastity or like the sense of portraying yourself as a virgin almost but like living the opposite life in this past life um, and this doesn't necessarily have to be just in like sexual encounters but like that kind of energy that was like the life that you lived like you had this disassociation from self or from truth where you lived where you you portrayed yourself to be honest or loyal or like a virgin or whatever it was but you were actually like the complete opposite of that and I feel like a part of that has transferred into this life, whether that's in relationships where you portray yourself to be um, flighty or honest or dishonest or however it is that you portray yourself in your life to be this time. It's like you actually desire the opposite of that 
whatever that means for you. Interesting. So let's keep going here. Group number three. Our first card out is watch and listen carefully. So yeah, there is like this emphasis on on following through with the words that you say or like following through with with what you say you're going to do or what you say you're not going to do. Um, and we have the golden moment. So I do feel for you guys that there is some sort of like initiation or some sort of like opportunity or some sort of energy coming your way here where you are being asked to be aware of the present moment, to be aware of what is happening around you because there's going to be like this golden opportunity that you are being asked to seize um, that's really going to transform your life and really like activate you into this rebirth and into this change. I, I'm seeing this almost as like this this one point in your life, this one defining moment coming into your life soon where you are going to have this opportunity to almost, almost to grab a hold of your awakening, to take back your life in some way, shape, or form. Wow. Okay. So let's keep going here. Okay, so we have set coming out, yeah, with challenges, um, which doesn't really surprise me at all. I really strongly feel like you guys had a lot of almost like personality challenges or like a lot of, uh, I, I want to say disassociation, like a lot of setbacks in this past life um, really had to learn how to navigate through your life alone is kind of what I feel here. Um, and it kind of created a lot of things within you and within your subconscious that you weren't able to see or recognize and because of that it's it's kind of um, brought a lot of shadow work over into this lifetime for you guys to work through and then we also have uh, Selkit with magical protection which is beautiful um, so there is a message coming through here like not to fear changes not to fear things changing with the tower like things are destined to change for you in this lifetime there is going to be chaos there is going to be destruction um, but don't fear those things like as you do this shadow work and go through this transformation of self and start healing and seeing clear clearly and seeing the truth of who you really are your life is going to start changing you're going to feel called to walk away from certain energies certain people certain environments you're going to feel called to connect to new energies and just things are really going to change I feel in your physical environment and there's a need to allow that to happen for you guys um so let's go ahead here okay and pull one final message for group number three. Um, any last guidance or advice for group number three in regards to this past life or anything else that you need to know? Wow, we have the feather with black tourmaline and um, cleansing coming through here. So I do, I almost feel like you guys, there's like a cleansing, a soul cleansing, like with this rebirth, as well as like a cleansing of your life, like a lot of things being swept away, a lot of energies being um, kind of cleansed out of your life. Um, so again, like things are really going to be changing for you. Um, so just be aware of that and be aware that it's happening for a reason. Um, so don't try to hold on too tightly or to control um, what stays and what leaves, okay? So that's a big message for you guys. But this is what I'm seeing for my beautiful group number three. If you enjoyed this reading, if it brought you value, if it resonated with you, please hit that like button as it truly does help to support the channel. Comment down below. Let me know if you chose this pile. Let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye. Hello, my beautiful group number four. Those of you that chose the Crystal Visions Tarot with the Peach Moonstone, this reading is for you. Um, and coming into your reading, the biggest energy that I'm picking up on is the sense of like high value. So some of you guys may have been um, like in a 
some sort of environment or energy or like lifestyle that like people looked at you like you were high value or maybe um maybe some of you guys were like I, I i hate to say this but like maybe some of you guys were like traded uh or or betrothed to certain people um because of the value or because of your name or your status um so almost like royalty kind of energy coming in here for some of you um as well as like this sense of just a lot of like high monetary value um so you may have had a lot of money or um something like that in this past life but let's go ahead and get into your reading here group number four starting off we are going to take a look at you and who you were a little bit about who you were in this past life um before we get into your tarot here so group number four who was group number four in this past life the energy of group number four and who they were in the past life coming forth so we have wow views of the ego yeah so there is a strong sense of um people only seeing like your worth or people only seeing how much money you had or maybe you only you know looked at that in other people as well because you had like a higher value or because you were worth more maybe um, I'm seeing this almost as like only wearing name brand clothes. <laughs> um, that's the kind of energy coming through here as to who you were in this past life. Like you only surrounded yourself with the highest quality, with the highest value. Um, that kind of energy. So let's pull one more card here. Group number four. We have a martyr coming through. So we have the light attribute with learning to learning the transcendent nature of services to oneself or a cause. And the shadow attribute is addiction to self-pity. So I do feel for you guys that in this past life you may have had a tendency to it's almost I almost really honestly see this as like the the spoiled child who maybe made other people feel bad until you got your way or if you didn't get your way maybe you kind of um threw a fit like that kind of energy like I deserve it and um I feel like this was a big part of your personality but I'm also picking up on this energy that as your life went on you maybe turned more towards like the light attribute of this martyr like maybe you gave your life for a bigger cause um and and it's almost like nobody ever expected it but it's almost like part of you did it because of the way people would remember you for this um so there's something here about wanting to be remembered um in like a good way but you did this for selfish reasons almost and not so much for the cause but for the way that people would remember you for that um interesting that's very interesting i don't think i've ever had um something like this come through quite like this but let's go ahead and get into your tarot group number four and go deeper into this starting off we are going to be looking at the past life that's coming forth for you okay um, so my cards just keep wanting to go everywhere for this reading when I was shuffling coming into this reading. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, group number four. Yeah, we have the tower coming out for this past life. So there was, it was a very, it's almost like a very dramatic life, lifestyle that's coming through here. But also it was like a sudden ending that I'm seeing here that maybe, again, like maybe you gave your life um, for something to change. Or even for some of you guys, I am seeing this, like those of you that really resonate with like royalty or being like of royal blood in a past life. Um, some of you guys, this is like um, losing your life to 
somebody else or like another country or another kingdom like taking over your castle or taking over your throne. Hmm. It was a, a very powerful life but a very sudden and dramatic ending and a very big change in kind of like leadership at the end of your life. That's how this is coming through here. Interesting. I'm also seeing here for group number four that you guys may have really had this ability to kind of control the way or change the way that people saw you depending on the situation and what um, maybe what was being discussed or where you were at, like really charismatic in the sense where you could, you could really alter how people perceived you in some way, shape, or form. So this may be something that um, came over into this lifetime. You may be very gifted at at only showing people what you want them to see or, or like projecting yourself in this manner where people um, form like this perception of you that you've already kind of determined and it's it's like you're very good at knowing how to act and what to say and and things like that in order to kind of manipulate the way that people perceive you whether this is for good or for bad is irrelevant you have this ability is what i'm saying like you really have the ability to control what people see about you how people see you what people think about you because you're very aware of how your words and your actions kind of can alter people's perception. Interesting. Let's take a look at something that's unresolved from this past life. The sun. Um, wow, so this was a very intense past life that's coming through here and very dramatic and it's almost like you guys never achieved your success you didn't uh, you didn't mm, you didn't get the happy outcome that you thought you would um even though like you were happy i feel like in your life and in your lifestyle i feel you guys were very content with that but you didn't get like the one thing that you wanted that's kind of how this is coming through here um you didn't get that one thing that you always desired or you didn't get that one thing that you said would always make you happy um some of you guys this was like true love some of you guys this was um status or money or you know it was different for all of you um some of you guys there was a desire to like be more of yourself instead of having to fragment yourself um and and maybe you never got to be who you thought you were meant to be or who you desired to be in this past life because of like royal obligations or something like that. So let's see how this is currently affecting you in your present life group number four. I don't know if I called you group number three but group number four. <laughs> we have the Hierophant. We have three major arcana coming out for you guys. Like, this is a very major kind of soul, evolutional kind of energy that's trying to come in for you in this lifetime. Um, with the Hierophant here, what I'm really seeing is, like, the maybe you get very caught up on, like, traditional energies in this lifetime out of this fear of missing something um there, there's like the sense of tradition that seems very important to you that stems from this past life for group number four some of you guys this might be like this almost like this royalty bloodline kind of sense of tradition where there's like a, a hierarchy kind of energy within you that you feel should be played out in this lifetime or that you feel other people should respect or um, look at in some way, shape, or form in this lifetime. For some of you guys, um, this could have to do with like the marriage as well. Um, maybe you didn't marry for love but for status or, or for some other reason, even if it wasn't status or money, there's like some reason coming through here for some of you guys that maybe you got married in a traditional sense out of a sense of obligation. Um, I 
interesting. But there's like, there's really like this huge emphasis here on needing things to be done in a certain way, regardless of how that's portray portrayed or projected for you in your present life. Um, really the way this past life is affecting you at this time is like this, this strong need almost, like a very strong need for things to be done in a certain way. Um, like this kind of sense of control, um, like traditional control almost like this, this, I don't even know how to articulate this for you guys, like really needing everything to be done in the way that it's always been done. Like you guys may really embody this energy, like really embody this energy of like royal obligations and sacrificing yourself for, um, for the greater good or for your kingdom or like doing things against your own will, um, kind of energy here. Even if it is your own choice, there's still like this part of you that does things against what your soul actually desires because of this past life and the sense of obligation that was placed upon you in this past life. Um, interesting. So there's a lot of self-sacrifice here. You guys may be very self-sacrificing kind of in this life in certain ways. Um, or really even just resist what you truly desire and do what you feel like you're supposed to do instead of what you truly desire. Um, let's see um, why you need to kind of resolve this, this issue for group number four. The Nine of Wands. So there's something here, you guys, about really needing to resolve this issue from this past life in order to take back control of your own life and, and to take back like your own personal will because like there's this sense of doing things out of like a defense mechanism or doing things in order to protect yourself from like outside influences like doing things out of this necessary like well it was necessary in this past life but doing things out of this need for preservation it's so interesting um and i really don't even feel like you guys um are, are maybe even consciously aware of this in this lifetime like um, some of you may be, but you definitely don't have to be consciously aware of this, but maybe diving into that and seeing, um, how much of that actually ring tr rings true for you in this lifetime and how you maybe try to manipulate the way others see you, um, or really have a very large emphasis on like your actions versus your emotions or what you desire or what you actually want. Um, it's almost like you act against yourself, um, Let's take a look at how you can resolve this group number four. We have the five of wands. So there's a confrontation, like a need for confrontation here. A need to acknowledge the conflict within yourself, um, to acknowledge the conflict within your your ability to take action for or against yourself like there's a huge need for acknowledgement of some sort of conflict as well as for some of you guys you may really be very competitive in this life lifetime you may really um, feel like you are constantly competing to be better competing to be better than other people or to be seen as as more than others or to be seen as as like you're worth more or like have a higher value than other people you may find yourself um, in situations with a lot of drama or in situations where people are having to like choose you over other people in some way, shape or form. Um, and there's a true need to acknowledge this and to find out why it is that your soul feels like you need to do this. Um, so what are you fighting for group? Number four, especially with this martyr energy here, like, are you fighting for, um, like a, a, a higher cause? Are you fighting for, 
um, happiness or are you fighting for the attention of other people or for other people to like boost your ego or for people to choose you over somebody else like really becoming very aware of that and and acknowledging it is going to be super helpful in allowing yourself to heal your kind of heal your soul from this past life um let's take a look at an important lesson that you're being asked to learn from this past life group number four we have the ace of wands So really you guys are being asked to learn how to it's almost like really being asked to learn how you manifest or how you create your life um, as well as for some of you guys you're being asked to learn how your life has been created for you out of expectations or out of obligation um, you're being asked to learn how to be reborn, how to recreate yourself. Um, it's a big lesson here for you guys, especially with the major arcanas coming through. Like there's a true need to learn how to start over um, and how to like, it's almost like um, how to direct your energy towards your desires instead of needing other people to fight over who's going to take care of you or who's going to do this for you or like whatever it is it's very interesting so group number four there is a, like a lesson here to learn how to fight for yourself to learn how to stand up for yourself to learn how to um, approve of yourself instead of needing other people's approval or other people to um, fight for you or fight over you or like however that comes through for you there is like a sense of needing like drama or competition or validation from other people around you in a, it's almost a very toxic way um, so really becoming aware of how and where you're seeking attention from others um, maybe it's out of creating like jealousy in other people or um you know maybe you make like certain partners jealous to see who's going to fight for you like interesting so let's go ahead here and see an energy uh, a characteristic or a personality trait from this past life that would be beneficial for you to channel um, now, group number four, we have the Knight of Swords coming through here. Um, learning how to speak up for yourself, learning how to speak for yourself, learning how to speak in difficult situations instead of, like, oh, okay, so this is group number four. This is about learning how to master your authority here, I feel like. Um, and, and doing it in a way that is higher vibrational, like really not allowing, like speaking up when people maybe fight over you or speaking up when there is jealousy or when like defending yourself, uh, potentially for some of you guys, defending um, your desires, defending your goals. There is a, a huge sense of needing to use your authority to speak up for yourself um, instead of needing again this external validation in whatever way it is that you seek that in this lifetime um, so let's go ahead and get some oracle messages for you group number four no, not those ones we're going to start with these and look a little deeper into this past life for group number four okay um we have knighthood Yes, yeah, see, there's the sense of loyalty, the sense of fighting for, like, a kingdom or something like that that seems very, very prominent here. We have unrequited love. Yes, the sense of being in, like, loveless relationships because you were betrothed or because it's for, like, um, the bloodline or whatever it is. Like, there's something here where you were in... Um, some sort of union or marriage or connection with somebody that was not what you desired. 
And then we have finances. Again, the value coming forth here. Those could not be like any more perfect um, than what they are for group number four. There is a huge sense of like this this knighthood, it, this knighthood, this this authoritative, powerful, almost loyal to a fault kind of energy here to a kingdom, to a person, to a bloodline, to a status. Um, that caused you to be in some sort of loveless marriage or union for for status or for fi for financial gain or um to to bring two kingdoms together or whatever it was but that's that's such a strong energy here so really reflecting on your current life and finding like where maybe those energies are at in your life now and how you've maybe um, done things out of this this desire to be loyal to something that maybe you're not even completely able to put your finger on but like there's this sense of needing to be true to something or this sense of honor or the sense of loyalty to um, a bloodline or to uh, it's something coming through here like where you have this this need to to be of high value or to put yourself in a higher status marriage or like whatever it is for you like really reflecting on how this has come through for you in your life is going to be really helpful for you to find where you aren't being true to yourself um, let's get some more cards here group number four we have <laughs> the richness within so group number four, there is a big, big emphasis here on finding the self-worth instead of the external value. Um, wow, the bottom of the deck here, we have past lives. Yeah, so really finding, really finding your self-worth and what you feel you are worthy of, really finding... Um, that ability to feel worthy of your own desires and your own happiness instead of sacrificing that to make somebody else happy or to gain some sort of status or financial um, status. Interesting. And then we have tea ceremony. So yeah, there is a huge emphasis to to sit in like a sense of of self-reflection here group number four a, a big energy here is to reflect on the self and find where you put yourself in in positions where you don't have the desire you don't have the passion you don't have the love for whatever it is but you do it anyways because you need people to see you a certain way or because you need um, status or value or gain in some way or even control in some way um, a lot of self-reflection needing to come in here for group number four let's go ahead here we have uh, pregnancy and birth hmm. some of you guys may not have allowed yourself to have children because maybe you've convinced yourself that it costs too much or um, you've put yourself in a relationship or some sort of situation where you've sacrificed that part of yourself for somebody else or for something else um, or because of something else or because of how you wanted people to see you or something like that. Interesting. And then we also have <laughs> Miracle Creation with Amon Ra and group number four. Some of you guys may be coming into some sort of miracle creation um, or even like you may have been like a miracle baby or um, ha you may have a miracle baby in some way, shape or form. Um, but it's almost like once you guys align to your soul's desires and what, once you align to your own passion and, and what you truly love, it's going to uh, almost miraculously come into your life. Um, so there is like healing of the ego trying to come in here. It's almost like your ego is trying to protect you from the things that you actually love the most out of this like subconscious fear of 
letting somebody or something down um, from this past life. So that's very interesting. Um, so you're still carrying like this sense of devotion, this sense of honor, this need to carry out your duties from this past life. Um, let's go ahead and pull you one final message, group number four, one final message in regards to this past life and healing your soul from this past life. Any last guidance or advice? Wow, yeah, see we have sacred sight with um, initiation here. So again, it's like you guys are being reborn, you're being initiated, you're being activated, maybe even coming into like a, a sudden enlightenment or a sudden awakening, especially with the tower here, group number four. So just kind of be aware of that. Um, you guys are being initiated into a purpose, into a passion. I feel for a lot of you guys like a, a strong passion coming in here and there's a true need to allow yourself to be immersed in this instead of resisting it out of obligation to something or someone else. Um, so that's a, a big, big message here. But this is what I'm seeing for my beautiful group number four. If you enjoyed this reading, if it brought you value, if it resonated with you, please hit that like button as it truly does help to support the channel. Comment down below. Let me know if you chose this pile. Let me know how it resonated. Let me know what other kinds of readings you guys would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye! Hello, my beautiful group number five. Those of you that chose the black tarot with the desert jasper, this reading is for you. And coming into your reading, we are looking at your past life and how to kind of heal or mend the soul by confronting this past life. So group number five, um, the energy that I'm really picking up on here is like the sense of the desert. So this could be kind of geographically where your past life took place or like the energy of the desert is like hot and dry and um, like fire type energy may very much so have to do with this past life. So like the sense of heat coming in here in some way, shape or form. So that's very interesting. Let's go ahead here and see group number five a little bit about who you were in this past life that's coming forth who you were as a person and then we will get into your tarot and take a look at this past life and um what maybe happened and how to heal but group number five who were you as a person in this past life group number five wow so we have the Hilarion group number five, and this is number five, so that's very interesting. I really feel for you guys that you were a person whom, maybe achieved a lot academically, um, but there was like the sense of whatever it was that you were interested in or wherever it was that you went in your life It was in a sense where like you always had to continue learning It's kind of the message that I'm getting with this card here is like um, Maybe you went into medicine where you always had to continue learning or maybe you went into Some other field or some other kind of part of life spirituality even for some of you where you always had to continue learning. You always had to like keep up with the knowledge that was evolving at that time. So that's very interesting. Um, so with that, those of you that resonate with like um, having a spiritual past life or being um, a spiritual practitioner or maybe even like practicing witchcraft in a past life, this could be like that heat that I was feeling could have been because of that. It could have been like a witch trial type energy. Um, Scotland energy is coming in here as well. So interesting. Group number five. So the card that came out fell on the floor here. But um, we have here victim. Uh, prevents you from letting yourself be victimized or victimizing others. Um, and shadow attributes playing the victim for positive feedback in the form of pity, inability to maintain personal boundaries. So I really feel for you guys that you were some sort of, it's almost like you, you maybe did embody this victim energy. 
in your life, but it almost it's almost like it it solidified the fact that you were going to be a victim to your circumstances. So it's almost interesting. Hmm. So group number five, there's like this sense of always keeping yourself in some sort of position to where you were vulnerable. There, there's like the sense of vulnerability coming in here where, where other people may have had access to your vulnerabilities or access to like weak points or, um, interesting. There's just a sense of being in a state where other people maybe had control over you or other people maybe had information that could put you in a bad position or maybe, um, because of your line of work, if you were into like medicine or even like herbal medicine, things like that, if you were like a healer, maybe that puts you in a position to um, be perceived as like a witch. Um, wow. Okay. So let's go ahead here, group number five, and get into your tarot. We are going to start off here by looking at this past life that is coming forth for you for group number five. Wow, we have judgment. Yeah, so there's this strong sense of it's almost like somebody accusing you of something or being perceived as something you weren't in some way, shape, or form. Like somebody passed judgment on you that almost I'm really feeling that that, that initiated the end of your life. Um But it's almost like for group group number five, it's almost like you allowed this to happen as a way to maybe save other people or um, as a way to end some sort of incarceration or suffering in some way, shape, or form. Wow. So it's almost like your life wasn't in your own hands is kind of how this is coming through here in this past life. Um, this could have been for a, a, an amount of time before you passed on. This could have been you being like incarcerated. This could have been you being born into some sort of life where your duties were tied to certain people or like you were expected to do certain things or um, something like that. Interesting. Take a look at something that's unresolved from this past life that wants to come forth for group number five. We have the Eight of Swords. Yeah, restriction. There is definitely this sense of feeling bound. Um, bound by oaths, bound by duty, um, bound by beliefs for some of you. And I feel like this is coming into your present life now in like the sense of, of self-restriction where you restrict yourself um, out of being like a victim to circumstances or convince yourself that you don't have a choice in something. And I feel like this plays out more in a sense where you're like unable to maintain personal boundaries. You're unable to speak up for yourself, unable to go against what anybody else wants or needs. Um, so some of you guys may really resonate with being like some sort of slave or like um, being a part of some sort of like slavery energy in this past life um, that is coming through here as well. Let's see how this past life is affecting you today for group number five. We have the Empress. A 
Okay, so group number five, what I'm really seeing here with this is that this past life that's coming forth is still affecting you, but almost in an opposing manner where you feel like you were bound by your past or your duties in this past life. And it's almost like you guys feel like you're bound by your future or the future of other people in this present life. Maybe you feel like you can't do certain things because you have children or because you have financial responsibilities to other people. It's almost like you feel like you're a slave to your responsibilities, regardless of what those responsibilities are. It's almost like you feel like they control you. Um, interesting. So there's a, a huge sense of restriction, a huge sense of feeling like you don't have control over your life here. Let's take a look at, at why you need to kind of resolve this energy. We have the Six of Wands. So there is some sort of like success or victory or overcoming conflict trying to come in here some of you guys there may be some sort of like competition or almost like competitive driven life or lifestyle or like career or purpose that you feel like very drawn to that you don't allow yourself to per like pursue because you feel like you're obligated to other things or like like it's against your responsibilities um so there's a sense of like sacrificing your success your happiness your victory here because you feel bound by responsibility or obligation um How can group number five complete this energy or bring this energy into resolution? Group number five, we have the Queen of Spheres. Um, so a lot of you guys here in this lifetime may really be feeling like you are bound by your lack of resources or feel like you um, are bound to like a life of poverty or a life of lack and I feel like if you guys pursue this passion or this purpose that you feel drawn to um, there's potential for financial freedom so there's something here about needing financial freedom in this lifetime um, for some of you guys, this could just be like any kind of freedom that your soul is truly seeking in this lifetime to free yourself from restriction in some way, shape, or form. Um, but I really feel like in this lifetime, you guys are meant to achieve financial freedom or financial st stability or like abundance in some way, shape, or form. And allowing yourself to move towards that is going to really help you heal like um the process to getting there is really going to help you heal and really help you recognize a lot of what holds you back because i feel like you guys are very restricted you guys hold yourself back from from your own success a lot of times i feel um out of this kind of victim mentality like you feel like you aren't capable you aren't able or you're not supposed to live that life because that's not the life you were given um interesting Take a look at a lesson trying to come through for you from this past life. Wow, we have death. Um, so group number five, it's almost like your soul is trying to come through here saying like, um, you know, this past life has ended and it's time to transition into freedom it's time to re there's a lot of things that need to be released i feel group number five that a big part of like your soul's purpose in this lifetime is about learning how to release restrictions limitations limiting beliefs um victimhood learning how to let go learning how to co consistently change and go after 
freedom, like consistently moving towards the sense of freedom is a big part of like your soul's lesson in this lifetime. Constantly learning how to change in order to keep from being restricted or held back. Wow. So that's pretty powerful group number five. Let's take a look at like an energy characteristic or personality trait here um, from this past life that would be beneficial for you to kind of channel now, group number five. We have the Ace of Cups, compassion, forgiveness, forgiveness, group number five, forgiveness, learning how to forgive, learning how to let go, learning how to have compassion. Um, is going to be like your biggest ally in this lifetime. I feel like forgiveness is going to be like your biggest ally in this lifetime because just because you forgive somebody doesn't mean that you need to put yourself back in that position. It doesn't mean that you need to resolve things. It doesn't mean that you need to reconcile. It doesn't mean that you even need to, um, you know, stay connected, but it's freedom for you. It, it allows you to let go. Uh, um, instead of con constantly like reliving that pain or that trauma, um, it allows you to let go. Wow. So that's very significant for this tile. Um, forgiveness is your best friend in this lifetime. Learning how to release, learning how to let go, learning how to free yourself. Um, big, big message for group number five is freedom. Wow. So let's go ahead here, group number five, and get into some oracle messages for you. We're going to start off by going a little deeper into this past life for you. Group number five, and messages about this past life for you. We have the arts. So... This may have this may be something that you guys can constantly kind of dive into and pursue and transform yourself in as well. Like um that consistent learning kind of energy coming in here with the arts again. So that may have been something that you were drawn to or involved in in this past life is like some sort of art, some sort of it could have even been like writing or um Something like that as well. But again, like this energy of doing something that constantly involves growth and learning and practice. Interesting. Angels. Yeah, I really feel like you guys were... Um, I really feel like you guys were really in a position in this particular past life where you didn't have any freedom or control over yourself, but you did have guides that really, it's almost like with this angels here, this Hilarion energy here, you can see like these ghost figures. There's, it's almost like you had these, this divine protection. Um, and I feel like they, they really helped you through this life. Um, we have farm coming in here. and Asia. So you guys may really resonate, or even um, it could be the complete opposite, depending on your situation. You may really resonate with, like, the Asian culture and beliefs and things like that, or you may be um, very kind of resistant to that part of the world or the kind of continent even. Um, I really feel for you guys that maybe this past life occurred in Asia. I'm seeing like with the farm, I'm seeing like um, rice fields. Um, so that's very interesting. Um, but I really feel for you guys that this past life uh, restricted you and, and you were bound by your duties. Um, and the only kind of escape that you had was like this progression of learning even if you couldn't do anything with what you were learning. 
Interesting. Um, but with the farm as well, um, and the arts and the sense of learning, like some of you guys may have really been um, healers in the sense of like herbal medicine, or you may have been very connected to like plant life. That's coming through here very strongly as well. And I'm not entirely sure why, but that's definitely here. And it may be something that comes through for you in this lifetime as well. Um, but let's go ahead and pull you some more messages. Group number five. We have the Garden of the Night. Interesting. Yeah, so there's definitely something here about like gardens, about plant life, like this farm kind of energy. Um, Maybe doing like some meditation work on those on on those energies or on any kind of questions you may have surrounding that may be very helpful for you. And then we have growth, um, which again kind of is connected to that farm life, to the plant life kind of energy. So there's definitely like a soul growth energy trying to come in here um, by releasing restriction. It's like your soul is trying to release restriction in this lifetime, I feel. The bottom of the deck here, we have empowerment. Um, yeah, so there is like this lifetime I really feel for you guys is surrounding like the energy of soul empowerment here um, and, and freedom, releasing, forgiveness. Let's pull a couple more cards, group number five. We have protection. So again, like the angels energy coming in here, like there's like protection, there's guidance, there is like spiritual protection coming in here. Wow. And then we have um, Imset with air spirit. And this is that knowledge and that learning and that kind of seeking higher, like seeking the higher self, seeking higher vibrations, seeking the truth. So group number five, there is like this message coming in here that as long as you are searching for the truth, as long as you are learning, as long as you are like gaining information, you will always be protected. That's very interesting. There's a huge emphasis here on learning and like being in this constant flow of knowledge in some way, shape or form. You guys may be very connected to the Akashic, um, very connected to the Akashic, even if you don't realize it. So our last uh, message here for you guys, any last guidance or advice that Spirit has for you in regards to this past life um, and healing the soul from this past life. Here we have reflection with winter and rhodonite for a stone to work with. This is number 22. So yeah, there is this sense of needing to reflect on what holds you back. Um, in a very big way, almost like shadow work kind of energy coming in here. What do you allow to hold you back? What kind of limiting beliefs do you have? Um, what kind of belief systems or thought patterns do you have that make you feel like you don't have a choice or you don't have control over your life? Um, so seeking those things are going to be super, super helpful. We have the garden of the night. So maybe working with any kind of herbs or plants that are known to help with um, shadow work, um, maybe looking into that or even um, for protection or anything like that, or even like teas. Um, uh, jasmine tea is one that's coming to mind. Interesting, maybe very, very helpful for you. Uh, but this is what I'm seeing for my beautiful group number five. If you enjoyed this reading, if it resonated with you, if it brought you value, please hit that like button as it truly does help to support the channel. Comment down below. Let me know if you chose this pile. Let me know how it resonated and any other readings that you would like to see. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. I thank you guys so very much for watching and I will see you guys next time. Bye.